The types of numbers available in Python depend on which version you are using. If you are using version 2, there are four types of numbers. If you are using version 3, there are three types of numbers. If you are using version 4, you're living in the future and I hope it's amazing. Our goal today, learn about the types of numbers in Python version 2. First, start the Python interpreter. If you see version 3, be sure to watch our video on numbers for version 3. This video is for people using version 2, and some of the examples will cause an error if you use Python 3. In Python version 2, there are four types of numbers, ints, longs, floats, and complex numbers. Two of these types are for whole numbers, ints, which is short for integer, and longs. Which one you use depends on how large the whole number is. Most of the time, you'll use ints. But if your number gets too large, Python will automatically switch to longs for you. Notice the hashtag? This is how you write comments in Python. Everything after a hashtag is a comment and is ignored by the interpreter. Let's assign the number 28 to the variable a. You can see what data type this is by using the type function. a is an int, not a long. If you ever need to see the value of a, just type it and press enter. This will print the number. And if you love typing, you can explicitly print it. Ints let you store whole numbers up to a limit. To find out the limit, first import the sys module, and then check the max int property. We'll talk all about imports and modules soon. For now, just remember that import sys brings in a library of system functions. Let's create an integer b with this maximum value. You can see that it's an int. But watch what happens if we create the next whole number we'll call it c. It creates a long. You can also tell this is a long by displaying its value. See the l at the end? This is how Python tells you the number is a long and not an int. By the way, if you print c, the letter l will not display. This is because printing displays more human-readable values. Luckily, you do not have to worry too much about ints and longs. If your integer gets too large, Python switches over to longs. You don't have to worry about integer overflow in Python. For the curious, the smallest int in Python version 2 is equal to minus sys.maxint minus 1. You can verify this is an int by checking its type, or by displaying its value and observing there is no L at the end. If you subtract 1 from this whole number, then you will see that Python uses a long. When creating a whole number, you can specify if you'd like to use a long. To do so, put a letter L at the end of your number. But given Python's automatic handling of ints and longs, this isn't something you really need to worry about. The third type of number in Python version 2 is floats. This is how decimal values are stored. To make a float, just type in a number that has a decimal point. We'll use the famous number E, which is approximately 2.7, 1828, 1828. To confirm that this is a float, look at its type. The fourth and final type of number in Python version 2 is complex numbers. A complex number has a real part and an imaginary part. The mathematical symbol for the complex numbers is a capital C with an extra stroke. While the mathematical symbol for the square root of minus 1 is i, many engineers will use the letter j. And this is what Python uses. So to create a complex number, just type in the real part and then the imaginary part followed by the letter j you can confirm that this is a complex number by checking its type. You can display its real part by displaying the real property. And you can access the imaginary part through the property named IMAG. Python automatically uses floats for the real and imaginary parts. Now that you know about ints, longs, floats, and complex numbers, you are ready to tackle arithmetic. Just remember, I is called J, longs end in L, and the only thing that can overflow is your drink.